I'm Adam Collins, he's Michael Vaughan, and this is Crick Buzz Chatter at the end of the second day of the first test match between England and Pakistan at Old Trafford. A captivating day of test cricket. Pakistan all out 326, thanks to 156 from Shah Massoud. But Vaughan, it was all about that last 90 minutes. Pakistan's fast bowlers, it was exhilarating. Yeah, I, I love watching Pakistan play cricket full stop. I mean, you know, you're never quite sure what you're going to get, but when they arrive and play like they have done here, they've played with great skill. Uh, Shah Masuda, you mentioned, he, he played the ball so late. 53% of his runs became behind square, just telling you how late he played the ball. And the running between the wickets uh, that Pakistan produced, particularly that partnership between Shadab Khan and uh, Masood, it, it kind of frustrated him. They didn't know what to do. They were just hitting and running. Um, he made a couple of, of strange tactical manoeuvres, bowling the off-spinners just after lunch up until that second new ball, and Shadab took advantage that was a key moment Joffre Archer not being used till late in the afternoon England were exceptional in the morning getting right back into the contest and very similar to the first day where England were very good in the morning session in the afternoon sessions uh, in, on both days the, the captain's not quite got his tactics right and Pakistan have capitalized on some you know, indifferent bowling and some indifferent field setting but also some outstanding play by themselves let's stay at the end before we go to the front because it was such a brilliant final stanza Shaheen Shah Afridi picking up a wicket with his fourth ball in test cricket in this country. Naseem Shah bowling fast. Mohamed Abbas outstanding picking up Dom Sibley and the danger man Ben Stokes for a duck. And then it was Ollie Pope coming in at 12 for three. Uh, the England number five, the young man who made runs in the third test match against the West Indies. He batted splendidly in the circumstances. Yeah, he played gloriously. He's a, he's a real talent for England. He's uh, the one batsman that you can look at and, and pretty much, I would say, guarantee that he'll be around test cricket for a number of years. He's just got the game. He played a you know, a little bit of a cameo because he needed to put a bit of pressure on the bowlers and he did so. Um, you know, those three wickets that you mentioned at the top of the order would be a slight concern to me. You know, Rory Burns has been at LBW on a few occasions, that head going over, playing across the line. Uh, Sibley's going to have nightmares facing Mohamed Abbas because he's just going to thud him back into the pads on a regular basis. Uh, and then Ben Stokes batted a yard outside his crease, he went towards the ball, didn't play with any real balance, the ball zipped off the seam and the off stump was uh, crashed into. So brilliant bowling, great skill. Um, I have to be honest, it's a common trend for the England Test Match team though. Uh, every time that I watch and the opposing team bat and bat first and get a score, anything beyond 250, and let's be honest, 326 is a decent score, it's not a monster. Uh, we generally in England have these kind of moments where we lose three or four quick wickets and uh, the test team have been doing it for a number of years. It's also the start of a series, the first test, so England generally lose it. Uh, maybe they should just start the series and say to Pakistan or wherever they're playing next, you're 1-0 up and we'll, we'll go from there because they tend to take a game to get into a series and that must be a real frustration for the captain and the coaches. And of course, Joe Root, the captain, was the fourth wicket to fall in that spell before the close. Yassir Shah bowling beautifully just in the lead up to stump. So England 92 for four when play was stopped at 7pm local time. Going back to the start of the day, we said so much yesterday about Barbara's arm, 69 not out overnight, batting like like an absolute dream, but he was out in the first over. So much scrutiny on James Anderson's second spell yesterday, but he bowled so nicely to pick up Barbara's arm and find his outside edge from the top, which put all the pressure on Shah Massoud. Wickets falling around him, he lost Saad Shafiq, Mohamed Rizwan, and there was Massoud up the other end, batting for hours and hours and hours. His century was up in 252 balls, but I think what was most impressive, his next 50 came up in, I think, 59 balls. So it showed that he could go through the gears and steer them in excess of 300. Yeah, and I think that's uh, high-class opening play because, you know, sometimes you have to play with attrition. You have to have the mentality to just hang in there. And then you get an opportunity. And, and, and the opportunity came because England didn't bowl as well. Uh, the tactics weren't quite right. And that's what high-class players do. They realise the moment and they realise the momentum shift that they can create individually. And that's exactly what he did. And, you know, again, I, I'll talk about England that they generally have this a lot when they bowl first as well. It's not always the batting that you can blame. Sometimes when they bowl first, they take a little bit of getting used to conditions. It's almost that they allow the opposing team moments where they can score freely and they don't stick to the game plan for long enough periods. And that might be the difference at the end of the week. And, you know, when you see bowlers like Nassim Shah, Shaheen Afridi, Mohamed Abbas, particularly Nassim Shah, I'm going to wax lyrical about him for weeks and weeks. It's Fred Truman. Fred Truman with a few more miles an hour on it. I know Fred's looking up uh, from, uh, from above and probably saying he was, wasn't as quick as me, but I reckon he is. He's quicker than Fred Truman. He's got a glorious action. They call him Lily, uh, Dennis Lily. 
Lily the action, very similar as well, but a wonderful young bowler when he's 17 years of age and he's crashing it into Rizwan at 89, 90 miles an hour. Uh, we're in for a, a real quality series because of the bowling attacks. All right, Vaughan, let's go into the hot spot. In the hot spot, Vaughney, Joffre Archer. A lot of speculation before the test that he may not make this 11, but he finished with three wickets, one yesterday, of course, and two in a row today. He was actually on a hat-trick at one stage. How did you see his performance overall, his speeds, and how he was used by Joe Root? Yeah, I thought he bowled okay. I mean, I, I thought at times he was used uh, at strange times. He was used late in the afternoon. I'd have brought him on a lot sooner. Uh, yesterday, I'd have gone probably more aggressive a bit early. He almost bowled traditionally English, pitching it up with a extra cover in place. That's for the likes of Broad and Anderson and Wokes to do. So he's in the side to bowl quickly to bring that difference, that X factor. Um, you know, but he picked up three wickets, as I say, he was on a hat-trick. I don't think he'll ever get a better chance when you think Shaheen Afridi strolls out there at number 10, averaging 4.2, and you're charging in. So he may not ever get a better chance of getting a Test match hat-trick, but look, I, I think he's been fine. I think he's, uh, his paces haven't been quite at the 89, 90 miles an hour. Uh, whether he's got a niggle, we're not too sure, but uh, he's been absolutely fine for the England team. And just a quick follow-up on that when we're talking fast bowling. They did miss Ben Stokes today, didn't they, as far as someone they could bring on when that partnership was swelling between Shah Massoud and Shadab Khan. Usually they would bring on Ben Stokes to maybe go around the wicket and bowl some short stuff, but he wasn't able to bowl today. Yeah, and you only have to look at the last two test matches when he hasn't bowled. He hasn't scored many runs either. And you always talk of great all-rounders that... You know, by bowling a bit, um, it helps the batting and vice versa. When they get a few runs, it helps the bowling. Um, so I just wonder, the move to number four, he's a number five. Obviously, that's where he's had the majority of his success. So that move to four, because of the fact that he can't bowl, England are playing one less batsman, I don't think it's working. Um, and he'll be desperate to try and get some bowling into his legs because all all rounders like to do everything. They're that kind of personality. He doesn't want to be stood at second slip doing absolutely nothing but catching the odd ball. He needs to be bowling. So hopefully his body will tell him that he's ready to bowl. Maybe in the second innings we'll have to wait and see. But so far when he hasn't bowled, it's not really helped his batting. And pressing fast forward, you talked about Nassim Shah before bowling in excess of 150 clicks, near, near enough to 95 mile an hour in the old money. Tomorrow, it'll be Nassim Shah, the 17-year-old, against Ollie Pope, England's young gun. This is a, a wonderful contest between two fantastic young cricketers. No, it's the future. It's the, it's the here and now, but it's also the future. Those two, I think, are going to have uh, many battles over the years. You know, we heard yesterday that England are really going to consider touring Pakistan in 2022 that would be great for the game and you know that combination of Shah versus Oli Pope I think it's one that we'll be talking about for hopefully many many series both here in England and also back in Pakistan in a couple of years time. So Pope's 46, Butler is 15, England 92 for 4, they're 234 runs behind Pakistan's 326. As I mentioned off the top a captivating day of test cricket tomorrow day 3, follow it all all day long on the Crick Buzz live blog and then it's Adam Collins and Michael Vaughan will be here on Crick Buzz Chatter.